My desire for pizza, set off a chain reaction that destroyed my family. The vast cascade of seemingly insignificant decisions and actions, led you to this specific episode and channel. If you ever become rich and successful, remember to thank Royal AI. What's the craziest butterfly effect that happened to you, because of a small decision you made? My desire for pizza set off a chain reaction that destroyed my family. One day got home from school and really wanted pizza. My family was poor, so spontaneous food trips weren't always in the cards. Really worked my pouty face to my mom and begged to go to the local pizza place for dinner. She said all right. While chilling there I saw my uncle walk by, and I was like WTF, uncle is that you? Now you might say, well he wanted pizza, what's the big deal? Well he lived several states away so to arbitrarily be in town and not tell anyone was strange. Turned out he was having an affair with his sister-in-law, my aunt on the other side of the family. She was basically a money-grubbing whore and the family protested. One thing led to another and everyone hates each other now. We haven't had contact in like 20 years. I just wanted some pizza. The first day I ever signed up for internet back in 1999, I installed Merck, because it was on the starter disk my ISP gave me, and joined a random chat room. Over the course of the next year the regulars in that room became like family to me. We would talk about everything. All that practice made me a fast typist and way better communicator than I was before that. They would even help me when I had trouble understanding something in my college classes. I also met my husband in that room, and we've been happily married for 18 years. Others from our little IRC family are married, too, and we still keep in touch. All because I randomly chose the chat room that day. So a few years back, I lived in Nice for a while, in south of France. As a musician I would make a bit of extra cash busking, and on Bastille Day, I figured I'd go and busk at the Promenade d'Anglais by the sea. It's usually packed, and it's just a generally pleasant place to be. I set up, played a couple of songs and was doing pretty well and making a decent amount of money. Then suddenly not one, but two of my guitar strings snapped, I even remember I was playing the scientist at the time. I was massively gutted and decided to cut my losses early. I stormed off home, by the station, in a bit of a sulk at having to restring my guitar and cutting short what was essentially one of my most productive days of busking since moving there. Literally one hour later, my phone starts to blow the fuck up with family and friends freaking out and asking if I was at the promenade. It was 2016. The truck drove into the same crowd I was playing too, killing 86 people, including my at the time girlfriend's uncle. I had two other friends who were amongst the 458 injured. I moved home the next month because it was too much, and haven't been back since. It's hard to explain, sometimes I think I was super lucky, sometimes I just kind of cry and wonder why I was lucky and others weren't. It's surreal, and despite what people think, it's a truly horrible feeling. In Afghanistan, wasn't done with my coffee, so I passed on a trip from one base to another. Since there was another convoy a few hours later, almost everyone died who took the first convoy. My second cup of coffee wasn't even cold when I found out. I had to call my heart surgeon to give him my new insurance digits. I had only just gotten them because the person who had them, had the flu and was not getting back to me. As soon as I got my numbers, I called the surgeon, the receptionist said, hey, we just had a cancellation for this Friday, do you want it? Of course I wanted to get it over with and not wait another month. So I decided to take the open heart surgery cancellation appointment, a month before my actual appointment. Surgeon said thank goodness I did, because once he got a look inside, he realized I would not have survived to the original appointment date. So, if the insurance lady didn't have the flu, I would have gotten those numbers a lot sooner, and never gotten the offer to have the surgery when I did. Someone else's flu saved my life. When I was in 8th grade, 13 years old, I had a really long bus ride home so would pass the time by reading. 
one day I faced the very serious situation of nothing to read and a minute to grab something in the library, and for whatever reason I grabbed a book on astronomy. That book was amazing and grabbed me like nothing else had before. I remember being excited to realize every astronomer on Earth was 13 years old once too, and that was a career you could actually do, even if you were from Pittsburgh. Anyway, today I am a professional astronomer who studies gigantic space explosions for a living. There was a lot of work to get from that moment to this one, but I'm always grateful that I picked up that library book. The older I get, the more I am constantly cognizant of the vast cascade of seemingly insignificant decisions and actions that led me to where I am. For example, a decision 25 years ago to change a refrigerator light bulb before going out resulted in my being at the wrong time and place so as to get mugged, which resulted in my decision to move out of the city I had been living in, which resulted in me meeting my wife, and from there to having all my kids and the whole shebang. I would have had a different whole shebang had I not changed that light bulb that afternoon, but the path to the present leads through that, and a thousand other, similarly trivial decisions. My existence. When my dad was about 20, he needed a phone number so he called the operator from a pay phone, she gave him the number, he hung up, and she accidentally refunded the money back to the pay phone. She called the pay phone back and asked him if he could put the money back in which he did and hung up again. She accidentally refunded the money again and had to call back again to ask him to put the money back in, he did and hung up again. She was so flustered, she refunded the money again and called back again and my father got to chatting with her and got her number. They set up a date, which she stood him up for, then she forgot his name when he called her again, then they actually got coffee and four years later were married. This coming August it'll be 50 years for them. If my dad didn't need that phone number, I wouldn't be here. My dad still calls at the most expensive phone call he ever made. My wife got an email from her old colleagues the day we returned home from our honeymoon, asking if she wanted to star in a short film they were doing for fun. She said sure, and asked if I could come along, as she knew I had an interest in movies, but at the time I worked in life insurance and was miserable. It was more than an interest, I had always wanted to make films, but never made the right connections with people and didn't know where to start. I made friends with the producer of that short film my wife was in, and 11 years later filmmaking and video production is my career. I've shot feature films, short films, video for TV and web, and all over the world because of that one email to my wife. Changed our lives. Oh, and that original short film never got finished. I finished working half an hour earlier and I was sent home by my boss, an old friend, on holy day in our hometown, texted me out of the blue and asked me if I could pick up her American friend because she could not make it in time and I was the only one who spoke English. Took a shower, shaved my head, picked her up, and 10 months later I married her. The other day I was driving home from work, traffic was light and I was behind a car with a number plate that started KFT. Decided to duck through KFC drive through for chippies with extra salt as a little treat to myself. They took forever to bring them out and by the time they finally did, all told about 10 minutes later, traffic has slowed to a complete halt. I need to get over a bridge that's normally 6 lanes which has now been reduced to 1. Turns out it's due to a massive collision involving several cars. When I finally get to the point where I'm driving past, I notice the number plate on one of the cars, that same KFD number plate. If I hadn't stopped to get hot chips I'm fairly sure I'd have been in a major collision. KFC chippies with extra salt saved my life. My husband found out after 18 years, that his mom's side of the family was Spanish, not Mexican. He found this interesting and changed his country to Spain on MySpace instead the US where he really was. Meanwhile in Australia, I was helping my friend find Spanish people to add as a friend as she was learning the language. I came across my now husband and decided to send him a friend request as well. We got along really well and met in person after 3 years. Have been together 11 years, married for 7. If he didn't change his country to Spain, and only for a day or so, we'd never know each other existed. 
Four years ago a kid I barely knew from school invited me to a Six Flags. I was a bit of a loner at the time and I heard rumors about this kid being weird, so I intended to not go. On the day he wanted me to go, I was feeling extra bored and decided on a whim why not. So I went and met this kid and two of his friends I've never met at a Six Flags. Four years later and that kid is my best friend, and I have three other very close friends I met through him. Not only that, but I also met my first girlfriend because of the connections some of my new friends had. It transformed my high school years from being alone to having an amazing group of friends I could do almost anything with. I intended to ask my best friend to be my best man one day, and I don't intend on ever getting out of touch with any of them. I'm home from college now, and we are going to have a lot of fun together. Best decision I've ever made. Thank you for watching Royal AI. Be sure to subscribe and hit the notification bell to receive future episodes. Share your experience in the comments, or tell us what you think of these stories.